This is Liberty Under Attack Radio, hosted by Shane and Matt. Your place for documented truth and where freedom is the only agenda. We must end the terror war. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Liberty Under Attack Radio. Today is May 17th, 2015, and I am pre-recording this for the May 24th broadcast. This is not live as I am on my week of relaxation writing, and I'm attempting to test out a design for a Faraday box at our bug out zone in southern Illinois. Instead of playing a rebroadcast, I have decided to choose a timely selection from Bill Cooper's Hour of the Time archive, dated November 9th, 1998, nearly 17 years ago, when I was a mere age of six. First, I'd like to recommend my listeners, uh, remind my listeners to check out my newest articles available at libertyunderattack.com backslash lua-news.html. The topics range from global disarmament, flag worship, all the way to my adventures in Illinois law, and also Illinois higher education. There's certainly something there for everyone. Again, that link is libertyunderattack.com backslash lua-news.html. I'll also mention the YouTube channel as I have some exciting plans for it in the near future. You can check out my videos and subscribe at youtube.com backslash liberty under attack. Again, that is youtube.com backslash liberty under attack. Thanks for tuning in, and we're excited to be back with you next week, pursuing truth and freedom as always. I would also like to emphasize that all credit for this broadcast resides in Bill Cooper and the Hour of the Time. This material is being used under Title 17 of U.S. Code, Sections 107 to 118 of Copyright Law, and strictly for educational and research purposes. No copyright infringement is intended. This two-hour broadcast by Mr. Cooper is titled, I'm Tired of Living in a Police State, again from November 1998. Always remember, the government loves you, and we don't live in a police state. Thanks again, and laissez-faire. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Ladies and gentlemen, our broadcast last Thursday uh, sure struck a chord. I've uh, received letters about uh, radio control, model airplanes, helicopters, and, and uh, even gyrocopters, or gyro whatever they're called, gyro airplanes. I have uh, received a whole bunch of email on the subject. In fact, it turned out to be so popular that we uh, put a link from our website to uh, all the different places on the Internet that we could find concerning radio control uh, model airplanes, helicopters, and rockets, and all of the uh, other things uh, in between. And so, we uh, hope that you'll take advantage of that. And we have... <laughs> On the advice of callers and letter writers and uh, uh, people who uh, sent us email, purchased the uh, senior telemaster. That is, we've ordered it. We have not received it yet. And it will be here sometime this week. And uh, we're all very excited about it. Can't wait to uh, get it and open the box and look at it and, and start building it. And Pooh is very excited, and and uh, so is little Allison. <laughs> and, uh, of course, we're going to get the, everybody involved in this whole project, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I guess you've all heard by now that uh, Newt, <laughs> the great uh, salamander of the uh, House of Representatives, has uh, declared that he is not going to run again for Speaker of the House. 
In fact, <laughs> he has bought the whole baloney story hook, line, and sinker, and he wants to resign from Congress. Well, I say good riddance. Really, good riddance. Um, he's, he's just a uh, socialist Democrat in disguise. He's a new ager, has been all his life. He, uh, he was not for constitutional Republican government or freedom or any of those things. And it's going to be very interesting to see what transpires now. After this last election, the Republicans still came out in control of the House and the Senate, and somehow the Democrats have turned that into some kind of a great victory. And now they're saying that they're, they're not going to impeach the president and all of this kind of stuff uh, based on that election. Folks, this is the biggest crock of crap I have ever... Well, it's not the biggest I've ever seen or heard of, but it's way up there. It's really close. This is insanity, just like the rest of it. There was no defeat for the Republicans. And uh, the only people who were defeated once again, except except where the body <laughs> was elected as governor of a state, uh, the loser is the people of America. Because the Republicans aren't going to return us to constitutional Republican government, no matter what they say. They've been lying to us for years. You've been believing everything they say instead of watching everything that they do. If you watch what they do instead of listening to what they say, well, then you might have discovered something. You see, belonging to a party doesn't mean anything in this country. All it means is you're being sucked into voting socialists no matter who you vote for. And you better learn that real quick. If you want to stay free, if you want to live in a free country, if you want constitutional Republican government that will protect the individual rights of all people, then you had better learn how to vote American. Forget parties, forget affiliations, forget all of that crap. Vote for the people who will return us to constitutional Republican government and stop this police state in its tracks. And if you can't do that, then there's only one avenue left open to us. That's the avenue given to us by the Founding Fathers in the second article in amendment to the Constitution through the force of arms. And I think that's where it's a bit in eventually going to... Uh, end up anyway. I really do. I regret it. I hate it. I don't like it. I don't want it. But the alternative is to become a slave in a socialist, one-world, totalitarian government. And I'd rather do anything than that. Anything at all. So, folks, you better hang on. It's going to be a rough ride. Real rough ride. In fact, it's going to get rougher and rougher. It's going to get downright dangerous. A lot of people get hurt before this is over. And it won't be our fault. The meaning of tonight's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, was written by L. Neal Smith. And I want you to pay very close attention to it. Because it's my sentiments exactly. And if I know anything about my audience, I think it's probably yours also.
You may remember the way that at the start of Robert Heinlein's novel, Methuselah's Children, a secret gathering of the exceptionally long-lived Howard families began with the hero Lazarus Long assuming the chairmanship on the grounds that he was the oldest individual present. Well, I've been an active libertarian for 36 years last month, which I suspect makes me the senior libertarian at this gathering, presumably full of mature wisdom. Not to mention a great many other things I'm sure that several of you are practically bursting to bring up. Mature wisdom. Heinlein also asked us in the notebooks of Lazarus Long, as I recall, if we'd ever noticed how often mature wisdom resembles just being too tired. Ayn Rand said something very like that, too. And I certainly qualify on those grounds as well. You see, I'm tired. I'm tired of living in a police state. I'm tired of living with a government that, in the name of making the world safer for democracy, took a young religious conscientious objector during World War I, A uh, kid who was willing to do everything the army required of him, but wear a uniform and kill the people they picked out for him to kill. And they hung him by his shackled wrists in the deepest dungeon at Leavenworth, standing in a foot of icy water in the dead of Kansas winter. They let him die of pneumonia and then buried him in a uniform before his mother could arrive to claim his body. I'm tired of living in a police state. I'm tired of living with a government which at the end of a war widely advertised as having been fought to obliterate fascism forever, nevertheless agreed to round up two million Russian refugees in France and elsewhere in Europe at the end of that war, crowded them into boxcars exactly as Hitler had done to the Jews and sent them back to Stalin, who had them all shot to death within a few hours of their arrival. I'm tired of living in a police state. I'm tired of living with a government that smashed its way into the Utah homes of Mormon polygamists in the 1950s, people harming no one by practicing their First Amendment right to freedom of religion, sorted out the women and children and made them pose for humiliating photographs with numbered cards around their necks while imprisoning their menfolk until they signed statements making bastards of their children. I'm tired. I'm tired of living in a police state. I'm tired of living with a government that, sliming its way from one sleazy justification to another, every day for 51 days, confined, terrorized, tortured, poison-gassed, machine-gunned, and then incinerated 80 innocent individuals, two dozen of them beautiful little children, in broad daylight, on national television, and not only got away with it, but prosecuted the survivors, and, when they were acquitted, sent them to prison anyway for what will likely be the rest of their lives. I'm tired of living in a police state. I'm tired of carrying around the knowledge that a crooked federal judge imprisoned that handful of innocent acquitted victims of state terrorism to keep the government from being put on trial in his courtroom. I'm tired of living in a police state. 